Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, October 9th. The uh, full hunter moon is today, tonight. And uh, that's usually the week of the first frost here. And uh, consistent with that, we, we uh, our low today is 38 degrees. So we're getting there. We're, uh, we're going to be cold. So, such is life. And I guess that means that I'm not going to get that late fall crop of beans and uh, arugula that I was hoping for. Oh, well. They just didn't grow. We're going to do a major garden overhaul next year. Plow in a lot of uh, peat moss and sand to loosen up the soil, get some more uh, compost in there, and... Uh, We'll give it another try because this year it was terrible. But anyway, that's uh, that's a tangent I don't want to go down today. So I've got a, got a couple of things. I mean, first I want to update you on uh, the fundraiser for Casey, the golden retriever that had that uh, skin condition that I talked to you about this past Wednesday. You guys are phenomenal. Uh, you know, within 24 hours, I, actually, within 12 hours, I think the goal was met, and, and within 24 hours, it was exceeded. Um, the individual who who put up the thing, put up the GoFundMe, uh, shut it down. But it takes time for it to actually shut down, and people were still contributing. So, I just want to thank every single one of you that that, that took uh, the time and, and and cared enough to do that. I want to thank every one of you that took the time to just think kindly of Casey and his family and, and offer up a prayer, maybe. Uh, it, it made a difference, and the uh, the dog is, is going to be feeling better very soon. I don't have any actual updates on the dog, but I'll, you know, as they come in, I'll let you know. But the family is very grateful, and I was asked to pass that on to you all. So you not only have my thanks and and just a phenomenal amount of, of, of respect for the care that you all show for, you know, really strangers. It, it's, it's amazing. But also the, the sincere thanks of the family of, of this dog. So thank you for that, folks. Um, the second thing in this is, you know, it's, it's closer to home for me. Uh, I'm, I'm asking for, for your prayers and, and your thoughts and, you know, good, good emotions and whatever uh, for my dad. Uh, found out last night, so he's been sick for about two weeks, uh, GI type bug, so uh, flu-like, uh, vomiting, that, that sort of stuff. And, you know, it was getting bad, and my sister finally decided to, uh, she got a doctor's appointment for him. They live in rural Vermont, and uh, the medical care there is not the best in the world. Um, so she called his doctor and they said, well, yeah, we can see him October 17th. And she said, well, he's really sick now. And they said, yeah, October 17th. So she took him to the ER last night and they admitted him. He was severely dehydrated. Uh, his kidneys are, you know, not working great right now. And, uh, that's hopefully because of the dehydration and hopefully they'll kick back in. Uh, they also gave him a COVID test and he tested positive. Now, nobody else in the family, they, they, they all live pretty closely together. Nobody else in the family has tested positive. He doesn't have any COVID-like symptoms. He's just had a stomach flu. So this is, this is a little silly. Uh, and the tests are not 100% accurate. So anyway, the, the unfortunate thing about that is that they immediately said you have to leave now we can't see him he's you know he's in a, so he doesn't you know he doesn't really know what's going on he's probably a little bit frightened he's probably a little bit angry and <laughs> knowing my dad he's very angry um so you know, if if you could please pray for him uh not only for healing but for comfort um for comfort for understanding and for my my brother and sister and my my niece and nephew who are, who are up there in Vermont with them, uh, just you know that they get some comfort in this time, and that uh, God's peace and grace be with them. 
And if you're not a praying type, just think kindly of them, because uh, that helps too. So, thank you for that. I, I really appreciate it. it. There's so many times that I've experienced, and people close to me have experienced, the, the YouTube Pipe community coming together in prayer, and it's and 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 good thoughts. I I, I don't want to omit that because I think there's power there too, and it's amazing some of the things that have changed because this community pulls together in prayer and thought. So, thank you for that. Ah, so in happier news, uh, I shouldn't say happier news, he's going to be fine. In, in brighter news, in other news. I went to Woodcraft yesterday. And, you know, as is often the case, by the way, I'm wearing one of my comfortable shirts, what my wife calls trash shirts. Uh, if I let her, if she didn't know she'd have to, in, she'd incur my wrath, she would throw this shirt away. But I know it's not fashionable, but it's comfortable. Anyway, um, so I went to Woodcraft yesterday, and the reason I went is they have the Rikon Slow Speed Grinder on sale, and I've been thinking about a new grinder. I've got a grinder that's uh, it's an old, uh, I believe it's a Grizzly knockoff of a Tormek type grinder. It doesn't have all the fancy Tormek fittings and all that, but it's a slow speed, um, very high grit wheel for like polishing the tools that, that is um, a water wheel. So it actually has a tank of water that the wheel runs through and cools it. And on the other side, it's got a high speed um, <clears throat> you know, standard grinder that I have like a, an 80 grit wheel on that I use to shape tools and then I polish them on the, the slow speed wheel. And it's okay, but you know, I'm, I've been getting more into wood turning and it's just necessary to upgrade. So this Rikon slow speed grinder is on sale. Really nice grinder. It's got a lot of good reviews uh, and a pretty good deal. So I said, oh, what the heck, I'll go buy one. And you know, if you're going to do that, you need the sharpening jig. So I picked up the, and if you're not into wood turning type stuff, you're not going to know what I'm talking about, but I picked up the Wolverine sharpening jig and the uh, Vera grind attachment to help me sharpen lathe tools. And, you know, I was there, so I got some more tubing for my dust collecting work that I've been doing, and I picked up a hard black Arkansas stone that I've been wanting for quite a while, and so now I've got that, and yeah, some finishing stuff, and yeah, it was it was an expensive day, but I had fun, and I don't do it that often. Uh, but you know, you gotta you gotta invest in in your uh, your shop. By the way, this is uh, an Irish second little littler one. Uh, I've got two of these. The a larger one, which is actually one of the first pipes I bought. I believe it was the the second pipe I bought. The first was a Graybo, and then I bought an Irish second. And this is one that I bought probably about 10, 15 years ago. Um, but these are, they're, they're Peterson seconds back when Peterson thought they made seconds. Now they just think they make firsts all the time. That's my Peterson slam for the day. And I'm smoking on the bookshelf. And drinking 8 o'clock coffee, which I need some right now. And you'll notice I've got my baseball tamper because Phillies knocked out the cards last night. I was surprised, pleasantly surprised, of course. And I know a lot of cards fans out there are quite disappointed today. My heart goes out to you. I know that feeling. I believe the Phillies play the Braves next, so I'll be having that feeling soon. But, you know, look at it this way. It's better that the Phillies get knocked out by the Braves than the Cards if you're a Cards fan. You don't have to put up with that disappointment, right? So yeah, that that that's, was fun. Fun two games. Uh, last night was a really good game, but I won't won't waste your 
time with baseball talk because I know a lot of you are not fans. Of course, a lot of you are fans. But... I will waste your time. I'll tell you a story about my trip up to Woodcraft. So Woodcraft is up in Allentown. So it's about a 45 minute drive, something like that. And I left kind of early and I'm, I'm driving and I, I didn't have breakfast and I was hungry and I was thinking maybe when I get up there, I'll go somewhere and get some breakfast, lunch, because it was, you know, by the time I got finished at Woodcraft, it was going to be lunchtime. And I thought, no, nah, I don't want to wait that long. And there was the Panera sign. And so I have a love-hate relationship with Paneras. I don't like just about anything they make and they're overpriced and, uh, but their coffee's good. Their, 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 their coffee is good. But I used to pass this Panera's on my way to uh, getting my daily radiation treatments back when I was getting such things, uh, which is years and years ago. And uh, I would stop there for breakfast. So I would get a, a coffee and mix the half and half decaf and I think they're French roast and it was really good. Uh, I don't like French roast by itself, but the decaf mellowed it down and it was, it was nice. And I would get uh, an Asiago cheese bagel with cream cheese and I enjoyed it um, that that's one the one thing that I think they did really well was that they, they had some good bagels and their cream cheese was actually quite nice uh, it was it was almost like a, a blend of cream cheese and mascarpone or something but it's not like that anymore now it's just kind of regular cream cheese anyway so I go in and it's close to it's like 1130 now and they're crowded and you know you can't talk to a person you got to use the computer to order and I do that I mean you could talk to a person but they were so busy that there was nobody at the counter so I was just so I put in the order at the kiosk and I go and I stand in the, the little hallway that they have for you to pick up your food when it's done and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and they're calling you know Sally here's your order and Sally comes up and she has to get past me and it, it's just uncomfortable so 10 minutes go by and they call my name and I go up expecting my bagel and the, the woman behind the counter, very busy, I'm sure she was doing her best. She says, we're, we're out of Asiego bagels. And then she walks away to do something else. And I said, well, you know, a plain bagel will be okay. And she, she yells back, Okay, just a minute, and then like another two or three minutes go by, and they're really busy, so I, I get it. She's got things to do, and they're on timers and everything because they're cooking stuff, and I, I understand. So she comes back, I don't know, three minutes later maybe or something, and, and just looks at me like, I don't remember what we're talking about, but I know we have to talk. <laughs> and I said, a plain bagel will be fine if you have one. She said, okay, I'll check. And then another three, four minutes go by. Uh, at one point she yells, can somebody get me a plain bagel? I don't know what's going on. And I'm looking at my watch and it's now been, you know, we're getting on 20 minutes waiting for one toasted bagel with cream cheese. And I'm starting to get annoyed. But again, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt because they're so busy. And Eventually, somebody managed to find a bagel, slice it, toast it, and put a packet of cream cheese in a bag. It wasn't her, because I could see her, and, and she walks up to the counter, and she picks up this bag, and she, she looks at me, and she says, you yeah, know, this is yours. And I walk over and get it, and as and I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm frustrated, but again, I'm not going to complain or anything, because I, I see how busy they are. And as she hands it to me, she just kind of calms down and, like, Nothing else matters but me at this point, which I appreciate. And she looks me in the eye and she says, go up to the front counter, the manager's there now, tell him you had to wait more than 10 minutes for the bagel and uh, that I want to give you a free pastry. Now, I don't know what that means. I, I don't want a pastry, you know. <laughs> so I said, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And I just left. And I, I don't know if that free pastry would like come out of her check or something. I, I didn't want to do it. And I did, didn't want a pastry anyway but it was nice of her to do that it was nice of her to recognize that I had waited and that I might be a little bit frustrated but the important thing was that she actually took the time to like 
let everything else go away and, and focus on me for that moment. I know that was expensive for her because of all the other stuff that was going on. And I appreciated it. And I thought that was worth talking about because it's those little things, you know, sometimes the tiniest gesture can completely change your opinion of a situation or of a person. And, you know, it can be positive or negative. And while I wish I didn't have to wait 10 minutes for a bagel that I didn't really want initially because it wasn't the one I ordered, uh, 20 minutes, did I say 10? Anyway, while I wish I didn't have to wait that long, um, I walked out of there thinking, nah, they're okay, that was a positive experience. So, the little things. Anyway, folks, I have a busy day planned. Got to, uh, my wife's coming home today, so I got to run around and do all the things I should have been doing for the past two weeks while she was gone and didn't. Um, oh, geez. Well, I should have refilled that. My, uh, the toilet in our downstairs bedroom uh, stopped working last night, so I got to replace the flapper. And do the sort of, you know, organizational dusting, vacuuming type stuff that I should have been doing. Uh, kitchen's in good shape. I, I take good care of that, but everything else just kind of goes to heck. I uh, should take the dogs out for a bit today and brush them uh, when it warms up, maybe afternoon. It's going to be 65, I think. And this might be the last... Uh, Last weekend that we can have some fun out in the yard together for this year. And of course I got a new grinder to set up, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. I got so much other stuff going on down here. I got to get that, uh, the chest of drawers I'm working on finished before I even have room to, to start to work on that. But I got the sale price and I spent a lot more than I thought I would. Life is like that. All right, folks, again, thank you for your help with Casey, the Golden Retriever. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, thank you for thoughts and prayers for my dad. I, I truly appreciate that, and uh, I, I, know, I know you care, and I know that it'll help. And uh, thanks for joining me today and letting me ramble on for a bit. You all have a fantastic Sunday and a great week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.